I think the most important thing is learning how to adapt to the business and to your career. I never was one to say, hey, you know what, in 10 years, I'm gonna be doing this. And I'm still not that way. Yeah. Life brings me these choices. And then I choose which one do I wanna do? Or, or what I wanna do next? Or what looks interesting to me? That's how I've always looked at it. So adapting is key. Julio, thanks so much for joining us. We got to Miami. We're here. We're at Pier Music. The studio is absolutely fantastic. I'm incredibly <laughs> impressed by what you have here. Thank you. John Sakata said, you got to come by here and meet Julio. So we're here on one of the best recommendations you can possibly have. John Sakata, who's absolutely a phenomenal talent. I enjoyed my interview best. so well with him. He really is the best. Yeah, okay, yeah. So thank you so much for joining absolutely. us. Absolutely. Thanks for coming. You've got this fantastic studio. You've got this history of being a musician and playing and studying mm -hmm. at school. Tell me about kind of music started in the beginning stages and how the heck did it lead you here? I actually used to live up in, in New Jersey. I'm from, originally from Puerto Rico mm -hmm. and uh, we lived in Upper Montclair, which is a small town up, up north. I know the area. And at school they were offering violin lessons after school. So I went after school to give it a shot. <laughs> I, I loved it. I found that I was, you know, enamored with it. The first song I ever learned by ear on violin was Staying Alive. <laughs> I remember that. And I learned it by ear and my teacher like reprimanded me for it. But there you go. That was the beginning of the whole thing. So from there, were you into studying with music? Did you study privately? Did yeah, you... I studied privately. And then when I moved to uh, Miami, I started learning privately from Carlos Varela. He used to be the orchestrator and arranger for the NBC Orchestra when Toscanini was the conductor. Interesting. And so he's the one that really taught me, I mean, everything that I know. I mean, I studied music theory intensely, orchestration, arranging from him. That's the basis for my musical foundation, Carlos Varela. So that had to be tremendously helpful to have that. Mm -hmm. Now having a studio, mm -hmm. I mean, this really was great foundation for you to have. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was tremendous. And so when I went to UM, I, did, I went to the Frost School of Music. I already had a little bit of that of that foundation. I studied music there. I, I did my bachelor's. I did my master's mm -hmm. in music as well. Media writing and production. Jim Progress was the, uh, he was the teacher there. At heading, the University at of the Miami. At the University of Miami right. heading that up. And, but, but what I learned from Carlos Varela was key to everything, you mm -hmm. know. And that foundation that he showed you, th mm -hmm. that's still with you now. So when you think about. It's still with me now. I still use it because he was, he would teach me not just, you know, not just the basics of music, but how that translates to life almost. Mm -hmm. He was really a major influence on my life. Mm -hmm. When I think about how great teachers have an influence on us and what, mm -hmm. and what that carries with us mm -hmm. through the length of our lives and Absolutely. we still go back to those days to pull from. What do you think that you've pulled from him that you still use today? What are some qualities? I, I think one of the things is when you, when you approach music, you always think of it in, in, I always think of it in visual terms. He taught it that way to me. Whether mm -hmm. it's like, let's say even something super basic like a major chord, a minor chord, or wh what should go where, it's always thinking of it in visual and emotional terms. Mm -hmm. He taught me how to do that. He also taught me how to, how to think both linearly musically and not just horizontally. I think in school sometimes, you know, with chord changes, everyone teaches you how to think in a horizontal way, but he taught me how to think of it in a vertical way. So a lot of uh, counterpoint, and I said a lot of that with him, and that helps me out today immensely too. Yeah. What well, interesting, talk about visually and emotionally. Those mm -hmm. are really very, very important aspects yeah. in music to understand. Talk about that. Well, I think like, for example, uh, when you want to convey anything from like sadness to happiness to melancholy, you know, always think about it in those terms, depending on what it is that you want to convey musically. Mm -hmm. And so I actually, oh, I'm always doing that. And so when I'm producing in the studio, when I'm producing a vocalist, depending on what it is that I want to capture, I always think in terms of, you know, what the lyrics are saying or, or what the music's trying to convey and trying to get that out of the artist. How fantastic when you think about that. That's really, yeah, a, it's yeah. a very, very important, you know, producing and, and pulling the best out of an artist mm -hmm. is a whole nother study mm -hmm. of what that's like. And you've done that at a high level. So mm -hmm. talk about that a little bit, about, about how, do you, how do you pull out of people great performances? Well, the, the way to do it is for me to get into it with them. If it's a song that conveys, like, let's say, sadness, I have to get into it with them. I have to be feeling the same things. So. I, in a sense, have to think of s sad moments in my life or mm. things like that. And then I'm able to speak to the artist at their level, at that level, and try to pull that from them and try to grab moments from their lives. So it becomes very personal. When I'm yeah. producing, it becomes an extremely personal thing in the, here in the studio. Well, this is almost like method acting, where you really have to have that level of compassion and empathy mm -hmm. Yeah, to definitely. step inside that person's heart. Definitely. And yeah, it's compassion, empathy, and patience. Mm. and. You combine those things, and, and that's what it is to, for me to be in the studio. So, so I, I have a close relationship with the artists that, I, that I've worked with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where do you think your patience came from? 
Where did that come from? I don't know. That's a good question because yeah. I'm very patient. I think that that's a quality that a lot of people have told me that I Absolutely, yeah. that I have. Yeah. And I'm not sure, actually, to tell you the truth because I don't know if my parents are necessarily the most patient people in the world. So I'm not sure where I got, that from, where I, where I got it from. <laughs> well, you obviously learned it and it's a skill that you really need because yeah. to be here, you have to really be patient to extract and pull that kind of a you know, real emotional Mm -hmm. point out of that artist I mean, it really, mm -hmm. it yeah absolutely time. absolutely and sometimes like you said sometimes it takes time yeah. and you have to be able to say okay i'm going to be in here for the long haul until we get it right. right and i think that that's one of the keys to even to, to producing you know you have to be able to say it's not about oh getting it quick or getting disgruntled because it's not happening you have to be able to to know how to guide the, the session to where you want it to go so a lot of times it's either creating the environment. Sometimes it's me like having to say more, right? Yeah. Or sometimes it's saying less, Yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so I have to know when to do that. That's yeah. a real balance. So it's that's a balance, a, That's yeah. a real balance. Yeah, yeah. Find. So, so you're, you're involved now in the studio. And so, uh -huh. so where did Peer Music come into play? Where, how, did, how did this all happen? So I started working for Peer Music back in 2000. I've been at the company for a very long time. And doing what? I am vice president now of U.S. Latin here on the East Coast in Puerto Rico. Yeah. And so I run the U.S. Latin Department together with my colleague Yvonne Drazen. She's over on the West Coast, and mm -hmm. so together we, we do that. It was my first job in the <laughs> traditional sense. Really? Yeah. yeah, it was. So it was great because I think the company was looking for somebody who was creative and you know somebody who had worked in studios before and at the same time had a business sense. And I had kind of learned that when I was working with Alejandro Haying, who was another mentor of mine, nice. and he's now one of my writers, which, oh, which, is, is, that interesting? which, is, interesting. which is interesting. Oh, a very talented person, yeah. Very yeah. talented yeah. person. Yeah. Uh, he's a great musician, great writer, but also somebody who actually I learned a lot of the business from. So he taught me, you know, what a publishing contract was, how to pitch songs, and so really gave me the, the, the basis for that aspect of my job here at Pure Music. Yeah, interesting. So when Pure Music hired me, I think they were looking for somebody who was like that. You know, they were the ones who had the vision of having a recording studio, with the office and everything. Well, let's talk about that business side. I mean, being a musician, the artistic side is one thing. Yeah. Balancing the business side and knowing how to pitch a tune and knowing, how do you, how do you, I mean, well, one thing about learning it, but how did you develop that skill? Well, we'll talk about balance. You know, I, it's, it's definitely, you have to have kind of like, like two sides of your head, you know, like the, the, the business side and obviously the creative side. I don't know. I think I have to thank my father for that, for the business side. My father was a businessman all his life mm. and I kind of always watched him and see how he, he did things and the discipline. I think that there's a lot of discipline to it. So I think it was easy for me to, yeah. to like slide into it. But I think for musicians nowadays, you know, especially now that's everything, there's so much DIY, you know, going on. Mm. You have to like really know the business side. Yeah. And because if you want to get your music out there and you want your, your music to be heard, uh, you have to know the business side nowadays. It's really important. Like those days of like, you know, musicians who just, hey, no, I just do the music. I have other people handling the business. You know, that's like the worst thing that you can actually do. Yeah. And it's the worst thing for the music. Yeah. And that's what they have to realize. But that was a model years ago that, that somewhat worked many, many decades ago. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work now. It's a good point to discuss because yeah. it, it just does not work now at that point. No. You have to have your hands in everything. You have a, a business that's constantly working. You have to have music that's out. You know, you have to know how to get it out there. You have to know how to collect your money for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, because that's, that's really part of it. Right. And you have to know how to market it as well. And then in order for you to keep making music. So I think that that's, it's, it's so important for everyone. Like, I think that it should be a required class for every single music student. You have an interesting, an interesting skill base, the fact that you can balance that artistic creative side mm -hmm. and the business side. You mentioned about the discipline. Mm -hmm. Discipline is, is uh, like any skill, yeah. can be heightened and learned even more. Yeah, absolutely. Like discipline is like, you know, if I have to be somewhere, let's say, at 11 o'clock in the morning, then at 11 o'clock in the morning I'm there. And I make all the necessary preparations for that to happen. Yeah. You know, whatever they may be. There really can't be many excuses, right. you know? That's a skill set that musicians need to learn. But that's interesting because what that means is if you have to be there at 11 o'clock, yeah. if you happen to wake up at 5 o'clock, if you have to get up that early yeah. so you can get other things accomplished so you can right. get there at 11, right. that's what discipline is. Yeah, so preparation is key. Yeah. I think preparation is key and it also helps me out even like even producing. You know, if I'm going to work on a project, I have to prepare everything so that when I go into the studio, everything is runs efficiently and I don't waste any time. So on producing, um, you know, you have to be prepared. But in the business side, it's completely essential. Yeah. But I think that those kind of qualities, you know, help help you out on, on both sides. Yeah. 2017, Latin Grammy Award for Best Traditional you know, Tropical, Tropical Album. Yeah. John Cicada, mm -hmm. 
with the Charlie Sepulveda Big Band. Tell me about that, what, what that was like. Well, that was an amazing project. John and I were sitting in my office, and, and you know, he was, we were talking about pure music yeah. and about the incredible catalog you know, the company has. I mean, it's so incredible. I, I feel like a huge sense of responsibility as, as one of the custodians of this catalog at this present yeah, time. Great, great music. You know, because yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's the basis for I mean, all, all, you know, all of Latin culture, really, because yeah. it's, it's so huge. And so we were talking about it, and he goes, hey, you guys like have Benny More, don't you? You guys like control all his music. I said, absolutely. You know, Benny More actually was an exclusive songwriter for Pure Music back in the 1950s. Oh, my God. So, like, we, we have all that stuff, and that's his favorite singer of all time. Yeah. And so we kind of just looked at each other, and it was <laughs> like... Uh, Hey, you know, let's do it. I remember, and I remember um, my friend Peter Robles was in the was in the room as well, and you know, we were like, we were all discussing it, and so we went ahead and did it. And I was like, well, I want to do it, you know, where the music is, is is true, to uh, to Benny More, yeah. but I want the arrangements to be new, yeah. new arrangements. And so the most amazing thing, I was talking to Charlie Sepulveda. You know, because I said, well, I'd like it to be with a big band that's that's super tight. I don't want to, like, create a band here. Right. And Charlie's band plays every week in Puerto Rico. Absolutely, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. like, look, you know what? I, I think the thing to do is to go down there and play with Charlie's band. Because the, his band's going to be able to do it. And then talking to Charlie, he was like, Rey Santos would be the perfect guy to arrange the music. And Rey Santos, to me, is one of the greatest yeah. figures in the history of Latin music. <laughs> totally. One of the greatest arrangers of all time. I mean, he's a guy that I would like, you know, when I was a kid, I would, I would like, you know, look at Eddie Palmieri records, and I would say, and, 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 and other artists too, and like uh, Tito Puente, and Tito Rodriguez, and I would say, oh my God, arranged by Rey Santos, you know? <laughs> and so I said, what a great idea, and so he connected, he connected me with, with a maestro, and he was like, it was great, I met him in Puerto Rico, later we went to New York to work with him, and, and, and we contracted uh, uh, Ray to arrange the entire album. Thank and it was one of the last albums that he that he worked on before he passed away. He passed mm. away recently. Yeah. That was a great honor to be able to work with him. And we went to Puerto Rico, uh, recorded the album. John was like at the peak of his powers. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the a lot of the boleros on that album mm. are like you know first second takes or full takes that we didn't even have to edit on John's vocal with the orchestra. So it was like the way Frank Sinatra used to record with the big band. This bands is old blue eye style. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty powerful. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And it, and it reminded me of that. But leave it to John. John has that kind of an ability and talent. Yeah. Those kind of ears. He really is very special. Yeah. And Pure Music supported the project 100%. We took it to BMG. BMG uh, then went and created a soundstage special on PBS that played in like 70 or 80 percent of their markets in the US. Wow. So that was important. It was a surprise to all of us. All of a sudden, boom, it was nominated for, for a Latin Grammy. <laughs> I've been nominated quite a few times. I think at that time I had been nominated like six or seven times, but I had never won one. Yeah. And so that was my, my first win. Well, listen, being nominated in itself yeah, it's is, an honor. is winning. Definitely. It, it Definitely. really is. And, and what you've done out of this facility here, you have really kind of made a move and a forward motion in Latin music internationally internationally i mean you know it, it, it's based out of here how did you connect with all the musicians here in the miami area well that came through the years you know because i've i've been a musician i've been a producer you know an arranger and then later an executive and, and i guess you know slowly you start you know networking and and it's it's interesting that you point that out because you know relationships is one of the biggest yes. keys to to the music industry and to be able to keep working in it i think that more important than almost anything else i always like to say that there's there's like 50 people who do what I do better than I do, and there's 50 people who don't do it as good. Yeah. But the reason that I'm doing it is because I have the relationships. Yeah, yeah. And that's something that I always say. Boy, relationship, relationship, relationship. That mm -hmm. really is that. And of course, John, when, when, when your name came up, John had the, the highest accolades to speak about you. Uh -huh. In a relationship way first, mm -hmm. about you being as a person, then the skill base that you have mm -hmm. as an arranger, as a producer, with the mm -hmm. studio here. So I mean, there's a lot of, a lot, a lot of, a lot of, you know, full, you know, line things that came about because of what you've done throughout these years. Well, I'm honored that John would, you know, speak to, speak about me that way. He's, he's, a, he's an amazing person and an amazing artist and somebody that I've respected for so long and, and it was an honor for me to work with him. So. Oh my God. I, 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 and we're actually working on another project now. So. What, are, what are you working on now? We're going to do a project now with uh, one of the best pianists, I mean, in, in the world, actually. Uh, his name is Gonzalo Rubalcaba. Mm. He's a Latin jazz piano player and we're going to do a project similar. I don't know if you ever heard of uh, Tony Bennett's project with Bill Evans Very back well. in the 70s. Absolutely. Bill Evans was a great piano player. Great oh, piano my, player. I love Bill Evans. So he did this amazing album with Tony Bennett. Yeah, yeah. And it was great because you had a pop singer and a jazz piano player and when, you know, when Tony Bennett would sing, uh, Bill Evans would kind of like just accompany him and then 
when it came time to do the solo, Bill Evans would like really open up and play his mortal jazz, and yeah, then yeah. and then when came back time for Tony to sing, and he would go back and accompany him. So we wanted to do an album in that spirit, but utilizing, I guess, uh, Latin catalog. So we're we're working on that. This sounds Latin very music. exciting because I mean, mm -hmm. using that as a basis that Tony Bennett, Bill Evans, yeah, recorded, yeah, yeah. it was just so beautiful how they intertwined and weaved with each other yeah really, exactly really, really brilliantly done the way they had done that. right so we, we want to be able to capture that magic with this music now so yeah. oh that'll be fantastic yeah, yeah. yeah now last week latin grammy what happened last week so the latin grammys happened i worked on this amazing <laughs> album with luis enrique and c cuatro trio which is a venezuelan uh group and uh, with luis enrique who's an amazing artist yeah we spent four months on the album this year uh, from january to like may an incredible, incredible album. Amazing musicians. It got released on Empire Records. Right, nice. Empire released it, and it was nominated for actually two, two Latin Grammys, and it won both. It won for best folk album, and uh, and it won also for best arrangement for Rodner Padilla, who's one of the members of Sequatro Trio. So he arranged on a song called Sirena, so I was really happy for him too. <laughs> it was, it was great. And so now incredible. that same album is nominated for the Grammys now in January. And so well, that's the American Grammy. Then. That's the American Grammy. Yeah, so yeah. it's a, it's first time I'm nominated for those. That's and, beautiful. And I'm so happy for for the band and for Luis, such a great artist and and such a great project. I'm very proud of it. Do you pinch yourself sometimes? <laughs> yeah, I guess I do. But you know what? I've worked so hard. Nothing's really happened by chance. I think everything's happened because of because of hard work. So I'm like, yeah. you know, everything's happening the way it's supposed to. That's why I, I kind of look at it. Beautiful. Yeah. Musical influences when you were younger or now. Who were some of your musical influences that you listened to that really you felt shaped you to what you're doing now? Well, that's interesting because I was I have a very eclectic taste. If you think about uh, jazz, I, I listen to Miles Davis. Uh, he's like. For me, amazing, you know, and, and, and obviously in, in Latin jazz, you know, listening to Tito Puente all my life, yeah, for me, yeah. he was like, he was like my Latin Miles Davis. He was, yeah. a, he was a <laughs> you wonderful, say, yeah. I, had a, I had a chance as a drummer performing with Tito a couple of times, ah, and cool. we just had so much fun, he was That's so cool. great. <laughs> yeah, he was great, he was great. And then, uh, and then obviously listening to Ruben, Ruben Blades and Willy yeah. Colon, uh, you know, as far as like salsa music, that was, that was huge. Yeah. And on the classical side, I, I did listen to a lot of minimalists, so I listened to a lot of Philip Glass and Steve Reich. Uh, and of course, I, I love pop music as well, and so Earth, Wind & Fire is like, you know, one of my favorite bands. So I, I listened to Stevie Wonder growing up <laughs> and, and all that stuff, so it's a little combination, I think, of, of all that. And, uh, and, uh, and Brian Wilson, to me, is like uh, one of the brilliant, one yeah. of the greatest composers of, all, of them all. So, yeah. so it's kind of like a mashup, I guess. You know? Well, you, this is, this, is, <laughs> this is really a huge, you mentioned eclectic. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. But that's inspiring. I think that's inspiring for people to, who are listening to understand that, that you, you're not afraid to stretch your ability of listening to see where something mm -hmm. else can lead you. I don't think that there's one genre, let's say, of music that's superior to another, mm -hmm. but I do think that there are better artists than others. And yeah. so I'm very, you know, I guess artist-oriented, and, mm -hmm. and what I'm always looking for is, is that emotional connection. So, yeah, yeah. you know, and obviously, you know, that the quality of the music is top-notch, you know? Absolutely, And, and that's what I go for as far as the projects that I work with and the artists that I work with, and even the writers that I signed to Pure Music, you know, yeah. they're all quality artists. And I think that what's great is that the company's known for that, and, you know, I, I definitely try to keep that spirit. Well, it's a very high standard. You mentioned that Shakira was here. You've, you've had several Yeah, artists. she did. She did record here. She, yeah. yeah, she recorded Waka Waka here. I've had uh, Cheyenne. He's one of my writers. He mm -hmm. records his albums here. Um, I have Victor Manuel on the roster. He's been a, my writer since 2001. Nice. So he's, he's an amazing artist as well. And uh, Prince Royce. Uh, has worked here as well, and, and there've been there've been other artists that's on the on the Latin side, you know, and then obviously you know I got um, Nestor Torres. I'm recording an album with him. Uh, he's going to be in here uh, this week now. Uh, we're going to do a classical album, which we recorded with the Malaga uh, Philharmonic Orchestra. I went to Malaga, recorded the orchestra, and it'll be a great classical album with uh, com all music composed by Jose Cerebriere and conducted. Who's a peer music composer? Yeah, it's one of the great uh, living conductors and composers. So it's a uh, tremendous honor to work with him. And Nestor's gonna gonna perform on a few, on a few pieces. So <laughs> that's gonna be exciting. I'm producing that project with Mary Megan Peer, actually. So that's gonna be it's. Boy, it's, it's very gonna be cool. interesting. But you seem to put together this synergy of 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 the right people for mm -hmm. the right moment for the right mm -hmm. music. You mm -hmm. seem to have a real knack for organizing that. I think that's important. What's the repertoire going to be for the recording? Right. You know, 
and and helping to choose that. I, I think that that's one of the most important jobs that a producer has. You know, right. picking the repertoire, and then obviously picking the right people, the right musicians, the right environment, the right uh, for for each project. You know, yeah. and each project. There's no formula. You know, each project. It's not like I use oh, you know, the same musicians on everything. Right, right. You know, every project I think has a. Uh, has a way of uh, being put together and coming about, and so, and that's the fun part of it, you yeah. know. And then when you go to the studio, everything should just roll seamlessly. Yeah, yeah. If the, pre <laughs> if the preparation is if done well, if the preparation's well. done well, that, that's a very important yeah, part of the absolutely, process. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. No last minute snags that come no, up. Yeah, no, no yeah, last yeah. minute snags. And one of my one of the keys too is having a great engineer mm. uh, working with you. So I have here my right hand man, um, Alfonso Ordonez. He's a recording and, and, and mixing engineer. He's been great, and, and I've uh, been able to work with Juan Cristobal Lozada, yeah. another great engineer as well. We worked on many projects together, yeah, yeah. and I think that that's important. Listen, in the recording industry, these are the best. I mean, you're, you're really working with people that have high-level skills. Mm -hmm. They are sensitive people. Mm -hmm. they're, they're a great team. Team yeah. workers, so you really have yeah. a great a great organization of what you put together here, which is really very special. Thank you. you. Know, we have many many young musicians that listen to these interviews. They learn and they pull from it, and they're inspired by it. So, what what would you say to this next generation of what they need to have prepared so they can find their direction? Which is and they may start out as a violin player, and they may end up producing. So, yeah. you know, what what would, what would you tell them? Well, well, two things. One one is what what I said before about the relationships. I yeah. think that that's that's key. But the second thing, and I think the most important thing, is learning how to adapt to the business and to your career. I never was one to say, hey, you know what, in 10 years I'm going to be doing this. And I'm still not that way. Yeah. Life brings me these choices. And then I choose which one do I want to do? <laughs> or, or what I want to do next? Or what looks interesting to me? And so this is what I want to do, you know? That's how I've always looked at it. So, And that's helped me to be able to adapt. I think adapting is the key to be able to survive in the music industry. You, I've, I've seen people who have not been able to adapt, yeah. and I've seen you know, that, that it's been difficult for them to continue working yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. at the same level that they were working in before. So adapting is key. And even I have to like, you know, adapt. You know, uh, I have had to adapt over the years, and that's led my career to have pretty much moved from, from being a musician to being a programmer and ranger yeah, yeah, and yeah. being an executive and you know being a producer and you know it's 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 really been a great journey but that's i think that's because of the adapting boy it's the willingness that you have to change i think that's yeah. something which is really yeah. very very powerful yeah to, that's to, that's a, that, that's an interesting way of putting it yeah i mean mm -hmm. and, and to really you know and, and change in, in always in a good way because as the industry changes you are mm -hmm. like a chameleon you're changing within the industry which allows Correct. you to stay on the crest of what you're doing, which is right. really powerful. Right, so your ego has to be very healthy. You have yeah. to be able to say, you know what, it's not about me and, what I, and, and how I think things should be. It's about accepting how things are and you being able to work with that. Well, you for sure have done yeah. incredible things working with an incredible team. Yeah. You are still pushing it forward. Congratulations on the Grammy Thank nominations. You, Thank you, you so much. You are doing fantastic. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Julio. Thank you. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Dom Famulara here at the Sessions panel. This is so exciting. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Click the subscribe button to be a part of what we're doing. The views help us tremendously. All of your comments, we read them and react to them. This is incredible. The support you're giving us is great. The Sessions panel, we'll see you real soon.